Welcome back to Hyrule Warriors. As you just saw, I went on a rampage in this level to get an A rank. And now we can continue on with this pathway that leads into a dead end that requires a search for a weapon for Lana. Oh, it's also got two skull sculptures in it. All right. Let's see, that looks like that needs the digging mitts. All right, there, yeah. All right, Gandorf, dig up that hole. <laughs> All right. So let's see. What are we going to do here? Survive the attack of these powered up enemies as Rudo. All right, that shouldn't be too bad. Oh wait, that was Lana. <laughs> My bad. Let's see, how are my weapons looking? I don't remember being too good with the spear, so let's go f my best ceiling tome. I uh, just gotta remember which one it was. I guess that was the 210. Yeah, that, that looks about right. So, today I wanted to talk about Breath of the Wild 2. We still don't know much about that game. <laughs> There's only been the one trailer. And speaking of that trailer, people have dissected that thing all over the place. It's been you know, torn to shreds, rearranged to try to figure out exactly what's going on in that trailer. But we still don't know much about it outside of it coming out sometime in the future. And we're probably going to be getting news about it later this year. I'm guessing after Skyward Sword HD has come out. Um. But something that I'm kind of curious about is are we going to still be able to get weapons from enemies like we did in the first Breath of the Wild? That was a major component in that game. And I actually really liked scavenging for new weapons and stuff, but While it was a good system, it definitely had a lot of room for improvement. And I'm kind of hoping that if we keep the same mechanics of uh, retrieving weapons found throughout the world and weapons breaking, I'm hoping that they implement a new mechanic where if a weapon breaks, you can pick up a broken variant of it that you can then use to reforge that weapon and make it even stronger than the previous one with more durability and maybe even additional perks to it. Because in the first Breath of the Wild, I would often stockpile tons of the same two or three weapons, as many as I could. Just so that I'd have a consistent play style with a weapon that I'm comfortable with, which usually was Royal Claymores. As well as the, uh, the sniping bow that had the uh, sniper scope built into it for more accurate shots. I'm pretty sure those were the only ones I ever carried with me. That and the ones that shot three arrows at once. But I was thinking that if they do make it so that you can repair your weapons, maybe you could also make a permanent version of that weapon. However, there would be a lot of limitations to it. 
so that you can't just go around making an entire arsenal of unbreakable weapons. At least not very easily. Like, first off, whenever you'd break a weapon, it would spawn in a broken piece wherever the weapon broke. So if it broke while you were still wielding it, it would spawn in a broken weapon in front of you. But if you threw the weapon at the opponent, or just at the ground, wherever it would hit, wherever or whatever it hit, would have would be the spot where the broken weapon would spawn in instead. You know, for that little bit of extra immersion. Um, and you'd have to use multiple copies of broken weapons. At least two, I, I'd assume to be able to forge a new copy of that same weapon, so you can't mix and match weapons of the same type, but with different names, so like uh, a rusted sword can't be merged together with a royal claymore, for instance. Those two weapons wouldn't be compatible. It would have to be like two rusted swords that or two royal claymores that were broken can be used to build an entirely new one of either one. And I guess with the rusted weapons, those could be made into their non-rusted variations instead of a new rusted sword. Because that would be a bit awkward. <laughs> um... Anyway, with making a permanent variation of a weapon, you'd probably have to forge like a hundred copies of that weapon to make an unbreakable version of it. And you'd have to do that every time that you wanted to make an unbreakable version of that specific weapon type. So, that would encourage you to keep foraging for more weapons, while also discouraging trying to go after an entire arsenal of unbreakable weapons. So, it still keeps the general idea of foraging for new gear, while also giving a decent alternative. Uh... And the permanent weapons would also have, like, their own dedicated page, along with the Master Sword. Because I'm assuming that in Breath of the Wild 2, the Master Sword won't be running out of power anymore. And it'll just be its own dedicated weapon. And, oh, Gold Sculpture has appeared, and it's all the way in the middle. Um, anyway, like, the permanent weapons, the unbreakable weapons would have their own category in the pause menu, kind of like how weapons, shields, and bows all are considered different in Breath of the Wild in terms of pa what page they appear in. So, you could also have a page for unbreakable weapons, and... If you're tired of having one unbreakable weapon, you'd have to literally throw it away. Most likely into either a bottomless ravine or into a pit of lava. Just so that you could actually destroy that weapon. But again, that would also be heavily discouraged because that means that you'd have to go through another hundred copies of that, of the breakable variation of that weapon just to, to replace it. Uh, let's see. I don't think I've seen anyone else come up with this idea though, which I kind of hope becomes a thing in Breath of the Wild 2, but 
If it doesn't, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. And for all we know, the Master Sword might be the only weapon we get in Breath of the Wild 2. Um, well, for all we know, we might be getting traditional dungeon items back again, in addition to this mysterious glowing arm power that Link apparently gets in the trailer. Which, I'm really curious as to how that'll work. Something else I'm kind of hoping for in this Breath of the Wild sequel is that you'll be able, if you, if they bring it back, the stamina meter, I'm hoping that you'll be able to get both a fully maxed out life meter and a fully maxed out stamina meter by the end of the game, instead of just having one or the other, because I think without the DLC, you would be short three hearts if you maxed out your stamina meter, and I'm already close to the max amount of hearts in Breath of the Wild here with Lana. She's just four short of the max for a base hearts in Breath of the Wild without a DLC. And with the DLC, that amount gets reduced to two extra hearts missing, unless you decide to swap over two segments of your stamina gauge for two extra hearts. But then again, that would also be not counting a certain glitch that allows you to get both at the same time. Which I never really did because by the time I found out about it, I had already finished playing Breath of the Wild. And honestly, I was pretty decked out by the end of that playthrough. I think I maxed out all of my armor to have the maximum amount of defense. And I even had like the uh, the wild set of armor, so Link was in his traditional tunic and hat. And his overall defense was like I think 32 for each piece, so that was, I think, 96 defense. Which, when it's boiled down to that, I was taking a quarter of a heart of damage from almost every attack that wasn't from a boss. And I, I'm pretty sure I overstocked on arrows since I had hundreds of each type, except for Ancient Arrows. Um, I'm kind of curious as to whether or not we'll actually have the playable Zelda in Breath of the Wild 2, since she seems to play a big part in the trailer. She's seen traveling with Link throughout it, but... It also does show that they get separated during what seems like a cave-in, but I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since I last saw the trailer. So, the details on that are still a bit fuzzy for me. But, at the very least, it does look like will be able to go underground and into caves in the sequel, because there were almost no caverns whatsoever in Breath of the Wild that weren't super shallow. And even the ones that weren't shallow were only there for like a side quest, or to hide a shrine at the base of them. Here they are just a single treasure chest, but that was rarely ever worth it. Whoa, what just happened there? Well, we won! <laughs> oh man, that was a crazy battle and I A rank! So I think that means we got uh I forgot what does that give us? 
Oh, okay, that, that's a new weapon. All right. And I forgot just how adorable Lana looks in that outfit. Although I'm not too sure she pulls off the hat quite as well as Sia does. Even though they're technically two sides of the same person. But she's still cute. Nice, I... Wait. Oh, right, right, right. That was a reward for just clearing the stage. I forgot. There was no A-rank reward. Okay. <laughs> I got a bit mixed up there. <laughs> we got the Gate of Time. A magical tool created by sorceresses of old. Use a strong attack button to summon a monster and then do a combo attack with the same monster for an extra powerful strike. That's not actually a weapon in any Zelda game, but rather a tool used to travel through time in Skyward Sword between the present and the distant past. And uh, I gotta get rid of something. What should I get rid of? for this ceiling tome, which doesn't really have anything that I really need outside of... Actually, no, not even its damage is good, so I can get rid of that. Uh, let's see, let's see. I'm still saving up for, like, the third tier of tome to make an ultimate weapon out of it using these perks from, or these skills from the lower level ones. Uh, I guess I'll get rid of those too and get 11,000 rupees. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh man, I forgot just how many slots this thing has. Uh, I don't need that. Need that, need that, need that. Maybe not. Okay, not. Alright. And you know what? Speaking of Skyward Sword, Skyward Sword HD is still a little ways off from being released, but it is confirmed to have, like, amiibo support, and I, I think I've already talked about most of what I wanted to about in regards to Skyward Sword HD last time. Um, but there is something that I did want to bring up about it. Uh, let's see. I'm pretty sure that's going to need... Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's gonna need the power bracelet. So I can push that aside. <laughs> it looks like she smacked it with the book. <laughs> All right, defeat 500 enemies in two minutes. Wait, two minutes? This is 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't think it's even possible to defeat that many enemies in two minutes. But then again, I don't know, it might be. Uh, you know, I, I think... Hmm. Maybe I should train up Rudo a little bit. Just to, oh. That's not worth it. Not worth it at all. I don't have enough rubies to power her up significantly, so... I... Hmm. Maybe... Now, nah, I'm just gonna go with Ganondorf and use my oak overpowered trident of demise to absolutely crush these guys. But anyway, back on topic to Skyward Sword HD. I've got a plan on what I want to do with my with that game. I'm gonna do like three runs of it. I with I think only the third one being recorded. The first of which I'm going to play the game using the motion controls. Yeah, for nostalgia's sake, and see how that works. Um, and, wow, Link has already fallen. 
That was very quick. Um, the second playthrough I'm gonna do with the new uh, button scheme of being able to actually use buttons. And that brings to mind a question. How will the, uh, the heavily motion-controlled minigames be handled? Like, the minecart minigame, the, uh, the one where you get shot out of a cannon, and, uh, I guess also all of your dungeon items that used up motion controls. How will those be handled? Will those also be controlled by the the right stick, just like the sword will be? Or will those be controlled with the left stick? Those are the real questions here. And... And that is something to wonder about. I know that the game is going to have... Wait, no, 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 wait, I, I don't want to distract myself from what I was sorry talking about first. The third playthrough, after motion control and button control, I'm going to do a third recorded playthrough where it's with the motion controls again, but with a twist. And it's a very dumb twist, might I add, that I don't think too many other people are going to do because of just how dumb and situational this is. But I'm going to do a run with the motion control while wielding my prop of the Hylian shield and my wooden sword while also holding the Joy-Cons for maximum immersion. I guess the upside to this is that, well, two upsides, is that the, my Hylian shield prop, which is a solid chunk of wood, is left-handed, so just like Link's Hylian shield is in the game. So, I wouldn't have to be wor worried about getting my controls mixed up for the shield bash along with the sword swings, but also in that it'll be a pretty interesting workout for my arm because, like I said, that shield is a, a slab of wood decorated to look like an exact copy of the Hylian shield. I don't know which game it's replicating the shield from, but whichever one has what looks like a Deoxys on the lower section of it, that's the one it's based on. And wow, that was a quick mission. But yeah, that shield is very heavy. So it'll be a workout just thrusting my arm forwards with that shield strapped to my arm. It's crazy, it's probably gonna wear me out quickly, but dang it, I'm gonna do it, because why not? I wonder if that weapon is gonna be obtainable in Breath of the Wild 2. It all comes back to Breath of the Wild 2. And that was an easy A rank, which I think I needed to unlock at least one other stage. Let's see. No, I didn't. I was probably thinking of the next stage right here. Oh, that needs both a B and C, so... Is this one limited to Rudo? No, it's not, but... Ooh, all attacks are devastating. I don't think Rudo's up to task for this one. And I still don't have enough rupees to power her up, so I'm probably gonna want someone with long distance attacks. Nah, I still don't have his level 3. Uh, no. 
You know, it's been a while since we played as Link. Let's see, what... Which weapon would be the goofiest but most effective for this scenario? And uh, no, I use the gauntlets pretty often already. Yeah, let's go with Epona. I have a 420 Epona. I'm only missing one skill for her, but I'm probably gonna unlock that off screen. Let's do this. Let's ride into action on Epona. <laughs> oh man, it's been a long time since I last played as Link using Epona. I wonder if rideable horses will return in Breath of the Wild 2. If they do, I'm hoping they turn out to be a lot more useful overall than they were in the first game, and that's not close enough. Kind of weird how you can't really hit things from too far away in this game with the bow. Despite that being like its main attraction. Whoop! Oh, and speaking of bow, I forgot that the bow is one of part of his arsenal on Epona. Alright, just keep on hacking and slashing away. Um Right, right, right. Before I got sidetracked, I also wanted to mention in something else for Sky Sword HD. Aside from my ridiculous playstyle decision. Is that it's going to have amiibo support. That much is confirmed on the official website. I'm wondering whether or not they'll introduce a new amiibo for this re-release of the game. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they made, like, a Loftwing amiibo and maybe an imprisoned one. Maybe even one of Giram. And, huh. Yeah, I just now noticed that this area is a mishmash of the Ice Cavern, Lake Hylia, and Death Mountain. Like, you can even see just how smoothly cut this wall is because the the, uh, the time shift cut straight through a mountain. And, crud, there goes any hope of getting an A rank. Well, I didn't need an A rank. So, at best, I can hope to get a B rank unless I took more damage than is necessary to get a B rank. But something that I would be interested in seeing finding out is whether or not they'll do another run of the Skyward Sword Link amiibo. Because, I mean, it would only make sense for them to do so, considering Skyward Sword HD, Skyward Sword Link. Ideally, they'd package Skyward Sword, all physical copies of Skyward Sword HD with that amiibo, and maybe even the Gearim one if they decide to make one. <laughs> Just smack him with a sword, Link! Smack him with a sword! Wow, that, that is way more effective than everything else I've been doing. Look at that! 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 <laughs> okay, I'm getting carried away with that. Ooh! Crud. He hit me with another sword. Oh, oh no! No, oh, no, no! That guy almost smashed my face in. Why am I not using that more often? I've had a full meter. Oh. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> That's it for this mission. Good job, Apona! Uh, let's go pick up that healing item. <laughs> I like how it still plays the healing sounds during this, but no other sounds. Ah, oh, boy. Good girl. 
Now, let's ride off into the sunset together, Pona. Uh, Link? You're going to fall off that ledge. Epona can't swim! see oh I got a B rank from that I was not expecting that okay so that means that even though I got a C in one category I can still get both of these stages oh man that actually pretty funny. Alright, I'm thinking that might be the one on the right again, but best to be on the safe side. Yeah. Okay, just like I thought. I think it's the safe bet that anytime there's two armos, the one on the right is going to be the correct one. Just gotta keep that in mind. Fight as a warrior of water. Ooh, the level 2 scale for Rudo. Oh, right, but I'm still level 51. Well, I got more rupees. And that's one more than before. Plus a, an additional 15 power, so maybe? <sighs> that's my best one. 104 with a 320. I guess that's like 424 power? Is that how it works? I honestly have no idea how <laughs> these things scale. Heh, <laughs> scale. Alright. And of course, we're going into the water temple. Let's see. Okay. Good, no sculptures here. Defeat Volga without letting Daruna flee or the Allied base to fall. And I'm starting pretty close to the Allied base. Man, this Sage has such beautiful music. <laughs> well, it seems like that damage boost is helping a bit. Because I'm taking out enemies a bit faster now than I was last time I played as Rudo. But we'll have to see once I get to the non-generic enemies. And I went the completely wrong way because this place has a very awkward design and is filled with dead ends that only have one entrance. Like this room. Well, time to clear out this room. And we've already got four fire captains. Wow. Time to make some waves. Oh. Ah, they're really close to setting off those bombs. Uh, uh, okay, there he is. How did I knock him over without hurting him? And, wait, what? What's in that? Excuse me. Or I could just open the chest through that guy. <laughs> oh, a heart piece. Huh. Okay, well, time to head on over to the opposite end and uh, where's the exit? Where's, oh, there it is. Right, right, right. That's why I was talking about dead end with only one entrance. Well, it seems like a lot. Oh yeah, a lot of enemies are congregating here. And let's see just how better off I am now. Be free, my fishies! Okay, that did a fair amount of damage to the redead. Not quite as much as I'd like, but...
At least he's taking suffocation damage from that. Which, would that even actually affect a redead since, you know, they're technically zombies? Ah, that thing got out of the way. Oh wait, never mind, he got sucked in anyway. <laughs> Alright. Take this. Oh, <laughs> did not mean to blow him up. <laughs> yep, get behind him. Uh, enemies with shields are really annoying, but hey, that one went down much faster than before. So, that's a good sign. That means that even four levels helped enough to get the job done quicker. And, uh, am I going the right way? Uh, at least I have a full magic meter. Whoop. <laughs> that thing flew really far. Oh, nice, I broke his shield gauge. Awesome. And, oh wow, finished him off already. I probably should have saved that t for later, because I was already close to capping out my special meter. And, wow, another shield break. Nice. Yeah, this is really showing promise. I'm at least good at breaking shield gauges as Rudo now. Uh, let's see. Off to the other dead end where there's a fairy waiting. I think that one's a fairy of water or darkness. I'm thinking it might be water because we're in the water temple. Ah, oh, jeez. Stronger enemies have appeared. I still have no idea how I'm doing most of this stuff half the time. I'm just going with the flow at this point. Which, I guess is very appropriate, considering who I'm playing as. Uh, there we go. Fairy acquired. Okay, the Fairy of Water, so I was right the first time. Alright, so let's take out this outpost. And, considering there was a heart piece in that one treasure chest, in that one base, then I... I think it's safe to say that there's going to be another treasure chest in one of the three remaining bases. Uh, you know what? Yeah, that guy's gonna be causing problems for my enemies and- Oh! <laughs> powered up! Alright, let's... Well on him a bit more. Uh, he didn't get caught up. Now let's hookshot him with my power up hookshot. <laughs> I forgot that it pulls down the moon. Let's do it again! <laughs> Destroy two moons on that guy. Alright, let's get out of this temple. Uh, let's see, let's see. The one on the right should be my priority because I have the fairy fort. Alright. No more barrier. Doesn't even look like a barrier, it just looks like you're getting assaulted by poison. Or electricity. Alright. And oh <laughs> Alright, let's take care of you. Oh, bomb power power up. Yeah, let's go with the super bombs. <laughs> nice, that took care of him. Bombs away! There we go. <laughs> Get the fairy. Uh, yeah, I should probably take out that redid. He's gonna get in the way. Oh. I forgot that they could just do a focused version of their scream. So used to them doing 
the hurricane of terror that freezes you in place. Whoa! That's a bit of slow down there. Yikes, jeez, what am I even doing here? Got Blow them away. That takes care of a thousand enemies. I don't think there were sculptures here. Whoop. Oh, nice, I stopped him just in time. Alright, keep it going. I took a hit, but it doesn't seem to matter much. Ooh. 195 KOs. Nice. Oh. Light barrier. Alright. Hey, there's the Oceanic Research Lab over there. I think that was what it was called. The, the place where you can dive down to get a piece of heart, as well as the uh, uh, eye drops for bigger on. And it's, whoa, whoa, what just happened there with the camera? Why did I suddenly face away from the boss? Uh, grab that magic. Uh, I should probably... That was unnecessary. Didn't I really take you out? Hmm. Oh, jeez. Raid captains. Well, might as well take out these guys and protect this keep. Alright, take you out. Wow. Whoa, what happened? Why are there so many enemies here? Where are they all coming from? Hello. Okay, they're probably... Oh, jeez, what the crud. You know what? Uh, oh, wrong item. Ow. Bombs away! Bombs away! Ow. There. Alright. Uh, might as well take out this outpost, Captain. And now... No, no, I can't go that way yet, just yet. Uh, I can't go directly there. Or can I? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I just can't get any further than that because of the rubble. Alright. Now, let's take out this last base and see what treasure chest hides in it. And... <laughs> that guy just ran right into it. Oh man, that guy was, that raid captain was an idiot. He ran right into my vortex of water. Okay, one more boss here, and there we go. What's in the treasure chest? It... Open, open. You get T-pose later, Rudo. We gotta find out what's in this box. A heart container. Nice. And now she finally starts her second row of hearts. Alright. Swim across the floor! That looks so weird. Well, at least when it's on the ice, it kind of makes sense. Because she's, like, sliding on the floor. Rather than just generating a puddle underneath her. Oh, JC turned into a dragon. Oh, I got caught against the wall. Oh, jeez. Whoop. Oh, wow. Jeez. Alright. Create another vortex. For a water spout that time. He's just getting caught up in so many water vortexes. Nice. And blow him up. 
and pull him up again. <laughs> it was a chain of explosions. All right, he's almost done. And so is his mission. I'm glad he didn't decide to be a sore loser and summon a giant monster. Oh, and we got the A rank. <laughs> I didn't think I had gotten it that time because of all the damage I had taken, but I guess I took less damage than I thought. T pose for victory. <laughs> she literally looks like a T right there when her head is cut off by the victory sign. <laughs> and it's right underneath the letter T in the victory. Okay, with the artwork like that, I can understand why it's the silver scale. And now we got the golden scale, an amulet of Zora people, imbued with the power of water. Each combo attack will fill a gauge, a water gauge. Press strong attack button to expand the water for, a, to expend the water for a powerful range attack, I guess. So I guess it's really just a bracelet that has the scale attached, just dangling to, onto it. And this new one is a bit of a longer bracelet with the golden scale. Wait, if the golden scale is level two, what's the level three? Hmm. Questions for later, I suppose. Because now, I think this is as good a time as any to stop for today, because we got a lot done here. Hope you enjoyed, and let's see, a mission for Giram? Yeah, that's definitely something for next time. So, next time we're going to continue that mission, hopefully unlock this one, and yeah, that, that's pretty much just a guaranteed victory unlock. So, hope you enjoyed, and we'll be seeing Giram go through a quiz. Okay. Hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time for more Hyrule Warriors. Bye bye